I have a question for you on the SLB in particular. Do you look at that as a totally different animal than some of the other commodities, as something that's technically driven now and has nothing to do with fundamentals more so than the other ones? Well, you know, well, I got my start on the floor in silver when I was like 13. So I always view silver like, you know, with a different view of us. I mean, some people compare silver to an internet stock. Some of it is. Some people compare silver to an anxiety barometer. Some people think it is. Some people compare silver to, you know, Gold's redheaded stepchild. Some people this. But, you know, the, the point being is when you have, uh, what did you say, 1.4 million shares of SLB trading? Right. You know, which is just a silver equivalent. O option contract. 183 million so, shares. You know, and over in Hong Kong, they're about to start, you know, a gold and silver contract that may be denominated, in, you know, in Chinese currency in six months. I mean, you know, you know, you, you know, like here in the Bellagio, you can go to the $10 table, the $100 table, the $1,000 table. You know, obviously silver is the $1,000 table. I mean, you know? Mark, you mentioned silver at 13 years old. I mean, there are a few guys out there that are silver junkies. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I'm a silver junkie. I mean, you know, I mean, there are a few guys out there that are silver junkies. I know you're one of them. I was one of them for a long time. Is the silver trade over, or is it just taking a pause? Hard to say. You know, obviously, you know, it's just, I, I, I'm going to tell myself on the bus. Joe and I share a common friend who, you know, <laughs> we have no business being in silver. We go to his shop. You know, and he's on a hundred thousand dollars worth of silver coins. I go, I look at you, I go, oh my god. But you know, in reality, you know, I think that metals contracts are nothing more than the anxiety barometer of the world. I don't think it's supply and demand. I, you know, I think it's also there's a lot of crazy, you know, options, you know, contracts and volatility in the markets. But you know, you know, if you think that the, the currencies of the world are going to be debased, and people are going to need a place to move their money to, you know, precious metals are there just because of the lack of a better place to put your money. Remember. The door opens, everyone goes in, the door opens, everyone comes out, and this moves the markets. But Mark, what do you believe is going to happen? And just because people want to go to a precious metal doesn't mean they go to silver, they could go to gold, they could go to platinum or palladium. I mean, what, at the end of the day, what do you think is going to happen? How are you positioning yourself the, for this? At the end of the day, I think what you really have to do is now that there's fear in the marketplace, it will allow the markets to go a lot further than people think, because on the way up, everyone's going to be scared. And I don't think that, that I don't think you've had that before. You know, this move in silver, you know, is is scared of a lot of people. And that, you know, and again, markets climb walls of words. And this, so as a bull trader in this stuff, this, you know, is gonna, you know, I think this is gonna make the prices in the long run go even higher. Yeah, which is why I, I'm sorry, Pete, but I agree with Mark there, which is why I don't think the silver trade is over by any stretch, Frank. I still think that it trends north of 60 at some point later this year. I just think the way we get there is gonna be very, very difficult. <laughs> The best sentiment indicator is, I mean, I, and I'm not, I mean, listen, you know, you turn on the TV. If every show, if you're a show, if everyone's saying silver, 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 it's time to lighten up. When everyone goes, you know, it, it's a sentiment because it, 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 it's a compulsion. You know, in, re, in reality, you know, I still, I still believe, and I've said this time and time again, that somehow in the end, energy is going to be the ultimate currency and not precious metals. I don't know how we get to that point, but I... But when you take a look at the silver and, and silver's big giant move to the upside, we had the participation of people who had never been in the silver market through the silver ETF. I would imagine, just going out on a limb, that people feel really burned at this point and may not re-enter that trade. Do you think we'll retest those highs given that there's going to be that, that incremental buyer may not be there anymore? They might have been burned and they're scared and they're staying away. They could, and they could go, you know, again, I don't know where we're going to be in the next two yeah. weeks, but the interesting thing phenomenon with the silver ETF is if you trade the silver ETF, I do not have any exposure to futures and derivatives. At four o'clock, whatever, the market closes. The moves in silver from four o'clock in the afternoon to four o'clock in the morning are much more violent than the moves that have taken place there. So if you're a holder of, of, of SLV and you've got to wait till nine <laughs> in the morning to go ahead and redo your position, good luck. Okay, Mark, one last question. A lot of people out there might, might perceive the CME raising margin requirements as an effort to squeeze out the speculators. We all know that this is based on a calculation, based on the volatility of, a, of an ETF. But at the same time, yesterday, they widened the uh, the range in which these commodities could trade. Is that sort of a backhanded way of allowing the margin requirements to rise? Because theoretically, if you raise the range, if you increase the range, I would imagine that that would increase the volatility and could trigger another margin requirement raise. You know what? I think the CME has done a pretty admirable job in terms of what's going on with margins. And again, margins just don't affect speculators. They affect physical as well. And think about it. Even though the prices of the metal counters have gone down significantly in the past two weeks, in a long-term hold, you know, 
the, the owners are silver at twelve, thirteen dollars, are more ahead of the, you know the people that are short from twelve, thirteen dollars. So I, I think that you know it's it's very easy to play you know Monday morning quarterback you know. But if you know if I'm in the position of you know someone setting margins to see me, I mean that's that's an impossible task. You know you can always second guess them. And in terms of you know taking positions, you know how far you can trade in terms of you know what your limits can be. I, I come back to the same thesis that in times of increased volatility, if you just slow everything down, like an Indy 500 race, but just a little bit. It would, it, would, it would encourage more confidence in all these markets. Okay, Mark, thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. Mark Fish